Um, good afternoon, everyone. I think uh, we are going to start at this point. I'm happy to invite uh, to invite everyone to our and welcome to our regional call today, connecting young water professionals in uh, Africa. Um, my name is Ludmila Odut. I'm a part of a steering committee. Uh, um, beside that, I have like around 10 years of experience in water uh, sector and uh, with IWA, I'm already since 2018 uh, participating in different activities and in particular of uh, empowering young water professionals. Uh, we've been preparing this uh, uh, call together with Shaten Juma. She's also my colleague from steering committee. However, she had some kind of unexpected things of, at work, so unfortunately she will not be able to join. And uh, I hope like next time we will be all together. Uh, let me speak about few uh, logistic um, things, what we will have during our webinar. So during this call, this event will be recorded and will be made available on demand on the IWA Connect Plus with all presentations and uh, other relevant information. Uh, all speakers are responsible for securing copyright permissions for any work that they will present on which they are not legal uh, copyright holders. And uh, the opinions and hypotheses of conclusions or recommendations contained in the presentations <clears throat> and other materials are the sole responsibility of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect IWA opinion. Um, I would like to encourage you to use chat box uh, in terms of uh, introducing yourself. Um, you can uh, share your uh, social media uh, uh, accounts if you want to, uh, to share contacts as well. <clears throat> It will be uh, great if you will uh, start posting the questions there in case if you have to any of speakers. And um, and yeah, overall, like uh, uh, this, you can discuss uh, any any interesting things, whatever is like on your mind uh, relevant to the topic. Uh, due to um, cameras and videos, I would like to ask everyone keep them closed during the event for the speakers uh, uh, when we will be like uh, when you will be presenting that will be the time for you to turn on the camera and uh, uh, microphone and uh, i think we might even give the opportunity for the participants during the q a sessions to speak up their questions uh, uh the slides all of the slides is already like uh, collected and they compiled in one of the in one file so for all of the speakers I would like just to ask you to coordinate with me and ask if you need any change of slide um just for the review of today's agenda uh, we have some short presentation about role of IWA uh, young water professionals chapters uh then following um two panels along with the Q&A sessions and uh, also in the end of the call, open discussion with final uh, remarks. Uh, so um, let me try to talk shortly about IWA and Young Water Professionals community. Uh, overall, International Water Association um, uh, has an international reference and so source of knowledge for sustainable water solutions. It's uh, tried to support the global community to pursue their ambitions in relations to water-related SDGs. Also, it is like a catalyst for innovation, knowledge, and uh, best practice for water sector, external organizations, and opinions leaders, as well as it's uh, tried its best to provide experience and leadership in transitioning to sustainable water solutions. Um, overall, uh, IWA uh, re is represented in different uh, regions, uh, starting from Americas uh, to to. Um, Asia and South Pacific. Uh, it is uh, represented by research institutes, by regulators, by consultants, by utilities. Um, it consists with uh, uh, it consists of specialist groups, uh, task groups, 
uh, young water professional chapters and um, other parts of the organization. And as well, it has um, different activities. Uh, the governing member of young water professionals is uh, young water a professional steering committee uh, which i'm a part of so it's like the we provide the um, advice to the overall to the iwa to the um, secretariat and to the board on uh, in terms like what type of activities what type of uh, topics may be interested and how in better way to uh, engage and empower young water professionals. Uh, overall, we are like all under 35 years old and uh, we are from uh, multidisciplinary backgrounds. Um, yes, as I already mentioned, um, we have uh, one of the opportunities of um, uh, engagement of young water professionals is being a part of uh, the uh, chapters. So here in this map, you can see the distribution of our representatives of different chapters within the world. Um, being a part of uh, young water professionals, um, uh, you we can uh, join a group to contribute the discussion. We can be a part of steering committee. We can uh, be a part of country chapter uh, as well of a specialist group. Uh, we can join the forum and the program committees and also would be a part of uh, organizing committees and uh, other committees for the events like conferences and, uh, I don't know, different workshops, webinars. Yes, uh, so this is uh, the possibilities of young water professionals. And if you are uh, a bit about than 35 years old, of course, you can also be a bit engaged with all of that, but with uh, uh, different perspective. So um, uh, in terms of uh, online events, uh, uh, currently what is available for young water professionals is get, uh, get togethers, regional calls, which is uh, currently we are all attending and also global coordination calls and IWA webinars. Um, within the online platforms, there is a possibility to be engaged through Young Water, I'm sorry, Young Co uh, IWA Connect Plus. Uh, it is open to all members. Uh, there is also like Young Water Professionals group, and there is also groups for uh, each country chapter. Within Microsoft Tips channels, there is uh, a bit more limited uh, access. It's more like for Young Water, Young water professionals country chapters leaders only, and uh, there is some kind of uh, regulations toward that. Within the uh, social media channels, there is like plenty uh, ways to be engaged through Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and as well like regular uh, website uh, uh, through which uh, general information overall about IWA can be reached. Uh, let's say our topic, connecting young water professionals in uh, Africa. I would like to say that Africa has the youngest population in the world. So such a high number of young people, uh, it's like uh, a huge opportunity for region growth, right? However, this uh, new generation should be fully empowered to release uh, uh, all of their like uh, skills, <clears throat> energy and everything. But I'm sure even in different conditions, uh, young professionals and in particular young water professionals in our sector, they already involved and uh, contributed a lot to and contributing currently a lot to their region and uh, not only. So uh, uh, at this point, I would like to um, move to our first panel and introduce our first panelist. Um, it is... Um, Abdul Majid Osman from Ghana. He is head of payroll unit and uh, human resource information systems at Ghana Water Company Limited. Um, Abdul, um, Abdul has over 10 years working uh, experience both in the private and public sector. He's currently, as I mentioned, head of payroll unit and human resource information systems at, at Ghana Water Company Limited and as well chair of uh, young water professionals 
uh, of Ghana chapter. <clears throat> He has worked in various management capacities and has contributed enormously in attracting, developing, and retaining staff to enable the Ghana Water Company Limited achieve its vision of supplying potable water to the urban sector. He also worked as career development coordinator with the Yale Center for Business and Environment, Environment where he researched internship opportunities for students in the realm of business and environment. Um, Today, uh, Abdul will be sharing with us achievements and experiences as well as challenges of uh, Ghana chapter. So, uh, Abdul, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Luis Mila, for the introduction. So you can load my slides now, please. Yeah, they are already on. Yes, so let's go to the next. So as she rightly mentioned, um, my name is Abdul Majid Osman and I'm the chair of the Young Water Professionals Ghana chapter, and I will begin by giving some background on the Ghana Water chapter. So we have um, on record a total of over 120 members who are on our who are on our WhatsApp platform, and we regularly um, deal and connect with as far as issues about IWA Young Water Professionals are concerned. As part of the achievements for the chapter over the years. We mostly add an element of the company's orientation where we make sure that we introduce newly engaged staff to IWA, young water professionals. And to ensure that this thing is available and it is sustainable, the template that the HR department does always has IWA, young water professionals there. So anytime a new staff is engaged, he gets the opportunity to know about IWA to get about young water professionals and also to learn about how they can join and also participate in the activities of the young water professionals. The other things that we've done is that the, the chapter has organized a series of seminars to introduce and bring members up to speed with current trends so far as water is concerned. Recently, we had a, a seminar on flood management in Accra and how that is impacting the, the city which is making it um, a city which is not resilient and also to withstand the challenges that comes with flooding. The other experience that we've had as a chapter is where we've been able to get the company to sponsor some members of the chapter to attend the IWA Congress in Copenhagen last year. And through this um, um, Congress, they were able to network, they were able to also um, share some papers Personally, I was a chair and rapporteur for a session. My other colleagues also had the experience by chairing and sharing other events. When we returned back in Ghana, we shared this experience with our colleagues and also to share the opportunities that we have in the IWA and the Young Water Professional. Last but not the least, the Young Water, um, the Ghana chapter has, is introducing what we call the mentorship, where we want to bring the, close the gap the knowledge gap between our seniors who know, who understand, have a level of experience with regards to those who are new in the organization. We are doing this because um, um, the data available has shown to us that we have um, different cohorts of employees within the organization. We have the old generation, we have the Gen Zs, all of them are together. But with the introduction of the mentorship program, we are going to bring these two people together where the younger ones will get to learn from their senior ones and also share the experiences that we have with, with them. I can you, yes, can, I guess you, you had some issues, no problem. Yeah, Continue. yeah, you got Great, I'm um, sorry for that. So we've introduced the mentorship program where we are breaching the gap, the knowledge gap that exists between the senior professionals and the young ones who are joining the organization at a very young age and the young ones in the schools so that we can share some of these experiences with them as they join the other utility organizations for them to be able to contribute to the achievement of um, water for all as per the SDG goals. Can we go to the next slide, please? Great. So um, despite all the things that we've done and some of the things that we've earmarked to do in the future, some of the challenges that we have is the, the low recognition locally. 
um, um, most of the activities of the association are self-funded. Um, most um, there are some instances where, as chair, I personally have to I fund meetings or events that we do, which I think is is not um, unsustainable. And we believe that this goes with the recognition, so that once we get the organizations that we work with to acknowledge the fact that the young water professionals is an essential element of the association, it makes it very easy for us to get the support that we need. However, the good news about the Little Recognition is that there is a, a 16 number governing member board, which is currently working behind the scenes to ensure that we get the necessary recognition that we need. And they are trying very hard to ensure that they get the necessary papers and the necessary approvals, which has been approved by the chapter in London so that they'll be able to write to the respective um, institutions and schools so that we can recognize. Closely related to the low recognition is the funds to organize programs, which I have shared some earlier. Because of the limited funds, it's very difficult for us to be able to organize events and let members come. And for us to have a very fruitful discussion. Due to this, we've limited the number of events that we hold within a period so that we don't overspend um, as we have our own personal finances to take care of. Last but not the least is the membership dues. Most of the people that we introduce the, the chapter to are really interested in joining IWA. However, um, because of the issue of dues, they find it very difficult to even proceed with the discussion. So as a way of proposal, I, I want to suggest that um, IWA looks if it can categorize the, the dues so that if um, um, the staff is working, he can pay a certain amount. If the person is in school, he can pay a lesser amount. Or find a nice way to recategorize the payment of dues. Because from most of the interactions that I've had with members, they want to join, but they feel the dues is a bit high. So it kind of um, um, moves them away from joining or even picking up forms to register and become um, full members. So uh, from what I have seen and the data available to me, out of the 120 members who are registered locally, only about 10 or 15 are registered members of IWA, which I think is, is, is very low. So if um, IWA can take a look at how the membership deals will be categorized, I think it will go a long way to open up the net and get more people to register and become members. So that's it by way of challenges that I can share. And as far as the Ghana chapter is uh, concerned. Uh, all right. Uh, means you finished with your presentation, Abdul? Yes, can you please say that again? I'm saying like, uh, means uh, you are done with presentation, right? Yes, I'm done with the presentation. That's correct. All right. Thank you very much. I believe like uh, funds are quite important thing to for young water professionals. So it's uh, really a big deal to work on that. Uh, yeah, I think we will be able to discuss it on the on open discussion later on. Thank, thank you very much for your presentation. And we move to another presenter. Uh, it's Charity Supeo from Young Water Professionals Kenya. Uh, she is currently works as communication and public relations practitioner uh, at Nairobi uh, City Water and Sewerage Company. Uh, she's the president of Young Water Professionals Kenya chapter and served in the International Water Association Emerging Water Leaders Steering Committee as events and communications coordinators, our predecessors. <laughs> yeah, uh, she works worked in the water sector for 10 years now, and she has been providing mentorship in various capacities. Uh, for example, the recent one was 2022-23 National Global Water Initiative Program owned by the Technical University of Denmark and early startups from different countries globally. Um, Yes, what can I say? Karibu, uh, Charity, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, what an introduction. My name is Charity Zupel from Nairobi Water and Storage Company. Uh, the current president for um, Young Water Professionals uh, in Kenya chapter. Yes, uh, probably you could start in the slides. Uh, that was a good presentation on Ghana, by the way. You did a good job. 
Yeah, so mine is going to be extremely brief. Uh, so I joined Iowa in 2020, 20, in 2012. And um, uh, sorry, the screen is a bit. Yes, uh, and I've been um, in the communication department. And I remember one of the biggest challenges uh, that I had attending Iowa conferences was I felt like there was no space for any other uh, uh, discipline other than the engineers and the people in the chemistry or biology world. And so I think it was one of the best opportunities because I, I looked for an opportunity and I got it. And yes, uh, PR now in communication is well recognized by Iowa. So thank you very much, Iowa. And yes, this, I always encourage everybody in my chapter that there is room and uh, there's room and so much to do for every discipline in the the water sector. So maybe you should just proceed. Um, so the Kenya chapter, I have now been the president for the past three years now. And uh, we've been uh, planting trees with uh, other institutions, with schools. Uh, we've been opening uh, wash clubs uh, in different primary schools and secondary schools. We've been partnering with institutions and associations in the campuses and universities and technical uh, and, and technical uh, colleges as well. So uh, we've been quite active. Uh, I think the past two years until just after COVID, uh, that's when our association started going down. Uh, the funds were not as available as they used to be in the previous. And um, I think I'm also here to hear about countries that have different um, uh, different water institutions and how they go about in terms of their membership. Because uh, like in Kenya, we only have Nairobi Water that is the strongest with the strongest and the highest members uh, in Kenya. Um, you see, like in our country, in Kenya, we have different counties. We have like 32 counties and we are only represented in five counties out of the 32. So you can imagine how many other youths out there are not ab aware about the Iowa and the young water professionals. So uh, uh, I think it's also been a challenge for us to pull other associate, uh, other water companies because they feel like the Nairobi water is really championing it too much and uh, it's Nairobi water dominated. So uh, it's it's been tough trying to like pull all other youths uh, in the other different water companies and, and showing them like... Um, this is what you are doing and would like all of you to come on board. And um, I think we also need a patron that is going to provide leadership on a management level because for this, and, and this patron has to like uh, bring everybody on board and make other managing directors appreciate and understand the role of the youth in the water sector. So, as I speak right now, I'm just speaking for the Nairobi water. Uh, I've just tried to pull a few water um, youths uh, in the other organizations. And so far, I can say that we are 15 registered. And just like Ghana, the membership fee for the Iowa makes them shy off a bit because they think it's a bit expensive for them to join, uh, probably because uh, their pay couldn't be allowing them to have this uh, association member membership fees or probably the companies uh, to allow them to pay for the corporate membership fee like Nairobi Water because they're not really into the Iowa, uh, in the Iowa world. So um, right now as I speak, I really speak mostly for the Nairobi. And um, yes, uh, I've also been able to provide ment uh, mentorship with the, just the currently ended National uh, Global Water Initiative. Uh, that is a program owned by the Technical University of Denmark, DTU. Uh, it is It was just about the early startup from different uh, counties and also country, uh, counties in the Kenya. And um, it was also out of this that I was able to pull other youths in the other water companies and uh, three quarter of them, of the members are also from the Enya, the Giwal, 
initiative that we just concluded. And I think uh, uh, after we just finished that, that's how we are able to attend the Iowa uh, in Denmark. Uh, probably I met a few of you, uh, like uh, our April vice chair, yes. And uh, yes, we planted trees, uh, we started wash clubs, um, we visited the homeless as our CSR activity, that is a corporate, corporate social responsibility. Uh, we, we usually participate in um, forums and just like the ended uh, Nairobi International Trade Fair show, and we usually get a space as young water professionals to showcase our activities and introduce ourselves. And our governor from Nairobi actually visited our stand and he promised to give us his support. So I'm actually planning to meet him uh, by next week. And that could be a good platform for us at least to see if we can get fundings for our activities that we can continue from where we have left. Uh, we've also uh, provided mentorship in the universities and we are able to give them to give them easy access for internship programs in our company, especially those who are in the water sector, or even those who are not, because I've really tried to make this as flexible as possible, because as I earlier mentioned, people just thought it was about the engineers in this, uh, in the engineers and technical people uh, in the Iowa sector. So yes, we've tried to open it so much. And um, currently, we are doing a campaign that is Save the Water Drop. I think uh, it's something that is affecting most countries right now, the global warming and um, the lack of rains. So it's it's a simple campaign that is just uh, sensitizing our customers about the little treated water that they're getting into their taps. We, we educate them by just telling them first the process of where they get the water, that is the sources, uh, and how it's treated until how it's distributed and how they get into their taps. So that way we just make them to appreciate the whole procedure and give them the confidence of taking water from their taps. Because I think it's a, I don't know if it's a perception for most of these countries, like in Kenya, Kenyans, three quarters of them don't believe in taking tap water because they feel like it's not safe. So it's also one of the challenges that as a company we are going through, but as young water, we are trying to really educate our customers and the publics about the safety of our water and that it's 100% safe for consumption without boiling it first. So uh, by the water, by the safe the water, which in Swahili is uh, Okwa Tonela Maji, is just telling them, hey, please uh, make wise use of the water that you're getting on your taps, through your taps rather, sorry, um, by consuming it or cooking with it. Uh, don't use it for your domestic house chores because uh, that way you're making, uh, you're not making wise use of the water. So it's basically a few, just a few tips, like when you're brushing your teeth, remember to close your tap when you're brushing and then uh, let it flow in your when you're rinsing your uh, your your teeth, I mean, uh, when you're showering, you know, like those two. I wish I wish I'd shared on the slide uh, some of the artworks, but I can share with you guys later. Uh, they're just flyers with small animations and how you can use water. Uh, don't use the tapped water for washing your car. Instead, use uh, some recycled water to do the same. Uh, instead of you know, like just use the consumption of water. Uh, that is tough. That is what the Save the Water um, is all about. And we are also taking in the fat oils, um, FOGs, it's the fat oils and grease. That is basically how to dispose the fats, oils and grease in your house so that we can stop dealing with blockages of, of, the, um, of the pipes at homes. So those are the two uh, currently and ongoing campaigns that I have been able in my regime to actually be ahead. Yes. Uh, I think I can share with you the tips if you'd like to uh, later on and also for the FOGs. And yes, I think that's it for me now. Uh, challenges, um, sorry. Uh, as I as I mentioned, lack of motivation due to inconsistency in funding and reliable uh, unreliable support from the senior management staff, which I'm really hoping that we can change, we can change this once I meet the governor next week. 
uh, by this it has made a lot of young water professionals shy because they are doing papers. Uh, when they get invited to go and present their papers in abroad, they get declared because of lack of funds. Uh, just before I started the meeting, I was sharing with the team that uh, we got our approval to attend the Iowa Congress in Rwanda, but unfortunately, we just got a circular that we can't uh, attend because of the lack of funds. So such things really make us uh, go down a bit. Politicizing the um, young water professional, uh, everybody's just in for what's in for me, not volunteering without expecting anything in return. Um, yes, uh, lessons I've drawn from being an Iowa member, I would say, don't hold information like I've seen so many uh, people do. Uh, let others grow under your leadership, mentor them, teach them, and support others. Uh, volunteering comes with networking, which opens opportunities, both socially and professionally. I have really gained so much under the volunteering in the Iowa uh, world. I keep telling my peers the same. And lastly, don't wait to be invited in the boardroom. Invite yourself, learn, identify the gap, and then bridge it. I take pride in what I've done in communications in the Iowa world uh, under the leadership and the mentorship that I've had in the past. I think that's it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Charity, very much for your uh, such a you know, a detailed description of your experience. And I believe being represented even in five counties, it's already like very good achievement, right? And and uh, on another hand, uh, uh, you still have a lot of young water professionals to, to involve like in all of the activities and to, you know, beside involving them also like to improve the country as well. Yeah, and now we will, I think, move to another uh, uh, speaker. Mm. It is uh, Tala Rifai, uh, representative of, um, sorry, chair of Young Water Professionals of Morocco chapter. He works uh, as a project director at South Hydraulic in Morocco and overseeing process improvement and construction management of project portfolio across the country. Um, he's graduated with master's in water resource engineering from University of Texas at Austin, and he's passionate about construction and uh, water advocacy. And today we are happy to hear from about activities, review and achieved goals of your chapter. Tala, you're welcome. Uh, thank you very much for you, Mila. Uh... Well, uh, we're a pretty young chapter compared to the other two chapters. So my presentation is probably gonna be a little briefer than the, the other ones. Uh, we're only a few months old. Uh, the rationale behind creation, uh, the creation of our chapter is to, uh, it really comes at a time where Morocco is heading, at, uh, heading to um, absolute water sc scarcity by 2030. So there's a general awareness of, of the the uh, stakes uh, of, of water issues in Morocco. It is the case for uh, seniors, but also for young younger people. So our chapter is, has been a, an attempt to really address uh, address the issue for young people and, and really give them a voice and, and say that young people can also contribute to solving the issue, or at least to uh, have their say. Um, we have, uh, so we're a few months old. Our main focus uh, has been on the, the LinkedIn, our LinkedIn page as a way or a platform to communicate and reach out to our young water professionals. Um, we share uh, regularly about issues about Morocco uh, and water problems uh, in the region and, and nationally. Uh, we, uh, we have uh, attended a, a couple of uh, conferences and spread the word about the chapter. Uh, an example is uh, the attendance of the third international conference on water and climate in July, uh, where we're represented by our vice chair. And um, we also have secured a participation in the annual meetings of the World Bank coming up uh, this Monday in, in Marrakesh. Um, so we're always excited to spread the word about our, our activities and, and, and always reach out to more to uh, other young, young members. Um, our main focus so far has, uh, has been on uh, a series of webinars 
that we have started. Um, so this has been our way of, of uh, promoting uh, knowledge and experience sharing. We've uh, uh, done a couple of, uh, of, of, of uh, topics. Uh, we've done one on, on uh, canals, underground uh, canals, uh, by a researcher. We've done another one by uh, by uh, a researcher again on on water wastewater treatment plants and. Um, our approach is, is pretty much action oriented. So we don't want to just do these experience sharing and webinars, but we also want to come up with the practical outputs and recommendations for people to use. So what we've been doing is, is uh, coming up with uh, articles and also recording these webinars to share with other people that can use them. Uh, we've come up uh, for the example uh, that we can see here, the canals, we've come up with a list of recommendations, very practical. And that we published published an article about it, uh, or more of a white paper about it, so that uh, professionals but also researchers can build on the work, reach out to the researchers if they're interested. So uh, we, we we truly uh, try to make it useful for people. Um, yeah. So the webinars have been really really insightful for us, uh, and, and we look further to uh, to expand on those. We are looking at uh, another webinar for. Uh, for the Libyan floods, with a we have like two speakers, one from Libya and one from Morocco, to discuss the consequences of the floods and the risks. Uh, we have another one on finance, so it's not only technical topics; uh, it's also non-technical. Goes from governance to finance, to other hopefully more broader topics. Uh, so yeah, so we're uh, always excited to uh, share the knowledge with the young water professionals. Uh, can we move on to the next uh, slides? This was the other, uh, the last webinar on wastewater treatment plants. And keep going. This is uh, just the link for the practical recommendations. So some of the challenges we've been facing so far. Uh, well, basically, right now we're still three steering committee members, uh, with full-time jobs, which uh, makes it a particularly hard to expand on the impact. So we're looking to hire more members uh, as we develop enough following interaction and, and we have been pretty successful with that, uh, especially through our LinkedIn page. Uh, we uh, think we've developed enough interest in, within the community and we have messages from young people asking about how they can get involved. So we're uh, excited to move on to the next phase of hiring people and, and hiring help pretty much to, uh, to to expand on the impact. Um, we, we approached for the creation of a local association to reflect the, the need for in-person events. Uh, we have started the process, it takes some time, but we're, we're on it. We're gonna uh, uh, move on with that until we're able to host our first conference, host uh, workshops, and we have many ideas to explore. Speaking of plans, uh, the next slide, uh, well, before the next, yeah. Benefits about being an Iowa chapter. So some of the, some of the benefits maybe for, for people looking to create a, a, a WYP chapter, some of the benefits we really enjoyed is, is access to tons of resources online, to the community, the help of uh, people like Isabella and Ludmilla to really shed some light on, on what we do and help with the resources, with the support. This has been tremendously helpful. Uh, we've been sharing opportunities and, and really having access to opportunities to participate in, in uh, events and conferences. So it has been a, a pretty exciting. Uh, we had a few collaborations, one with Canada. We attended one, one of their events, and uh, but we're always looking uh, looking for other collaboration uh, for further collaboration with other chapters. And I think this is one of the major benefits of of. Uh, uh, YWP chapters is really the regional uh, uh, look in, in the water issues, but also uh, international one. Uh, of course, we enjoyed the Iowa legitimacy and support. This uh, this is very this has been very useful uh, to really gain traction and, and, and uh, reach out to young people. It does speak to them when it's an Iowa entity, so uh, this has been uh, very helpful too. So some of uh, 
uh, some of the current plans and, and well, short term, and but also middle long term, uh, we've uh, we have been looking into ways to uh, promote networking and also uh, helping really people meet and and, and uh, share experiences. So we're, look, we're looking at a digital space uh, for casual networking events. Uh, of course, as I said, expanding on the webinar series, which was a uh, very insightful. Um, yeah, we, we also want to really uh, promote uh, the role of, of, of young more professionals and their career paths so that helps the young, the younger generation to for their orientation and, and the future impact. And I want to support research, uh, studies in the in, like uh, in Morocco and in the region. And of course, as I said, we're working on the in-person presence. So we're once we have that, we're going to plan our first conference and uh, rational development workshops and other events, such events. That's it for me. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much, Dala. Um, I don't know. For me, it, it looks like your webinars were kind of quite advanced with some very interesting technologies and visualizations. So I believe you were working hard on that. And uh, yeah, and all of other activities, what you're trying to do for young water professionals are um, impressing. So now moving to Q&A panel, uh, uh, let me ask uh, uh, something uh, from Tala. Uh, I'm just wondering how uh, about this um, initiative uh, for recognition of 10 young water professionals of the year. I'm just wondering oh, how do you think to do that? Like how, what, what is your approach for that? It is very interesting and I believe it can be encouraging for them. Uh, well, it would it would come up pretty uh, organically. I think we're going to uh, reach out to people that we see very active in the community, uh, whether on a national level or regional. Uh, so we want to really uh, shed light on the work uh, these uh, local and regional leaders do. Uh, so it will be a, a, our spontaneous initiative by reaching out to these uh, individuals, asking them to share their story with us and and uh, their work. So we want to uh, promote their work, but also give, uh, it could be a symbolic uh, reward, but or even further if we can uh, sponsor that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's the, the approach so far, but we can develop it further. All right, thank you very much for your response. And I encourage all of the participants to, if they have any questions to maybe raise the hand. So we will allow you to use the microphone and speak up. Anyone is a volunteer with a question? Thank you, doctor. And thank you the presenters for this wonderful message you've shared with us. Uh, my name is Muhimba Morris from Uganda, at current I'm in Algeria, pursuing my master's of science in water policy. Uh, I'd like to know from the presenters, it seems most of the challenging, or the most challenging issue that cuts across all of the chapters is the issue of finance. Now, I think there must be a strategy that must have been laid down to ensure that financing is becoming, is achieving. I, I would know from them which criteria is now on board to, 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 to close the gap, the financing gap in the water sector, because it's like financing is an issue. How do you think this issue could be handled? at domestic level before we, we, we base on the international financing and funding. Then secondly, uh, I'd like to know if I register as a member and then I clock, I reach the age of 35, does it mean that I'm out of the game so I can still remain a member but when the age has kicked me out? Then lastly, I'd like to hear from you how basically engage the, the, the young professionals that are still in school like us. Uh, how best, is there any opportunity that these chapters offer in terms of internship, 
framing like that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you very much for question, Mohinda. Maybe Abdul or Charity can handle this question or you can divide it because there was like kind of complex one. <laughs> Okay, no problem. Let me let me try. I'll begin by answering the last question, then I'll move backwards. So when it comes to offering internship opportunities for young water professionals, I would suggest we look at it from the perspective of recognition. Like I mentioned earlier in my presentation, we had a challenge of recognition. However, thanks to the governing um, members that we have now, who are working tirelessly to ensure that we get the necessary recognition, once this is achieved, um, for us as a um, Ghana chapter, what, what, what we are going to do is for all organizations that we have relationship with to accept an element of internship as part of the program that we are going to do. In doing so, it makes it very easy for us to implement. For instance, I work with the Ghana Water Company Limited. Not all members of young water professionals in Ghana are members, are staff of Ghana Water. Some of them are in school. Some of them are in different organizations. So once we have the governing member and we have this um, agreement with these stakeholders, we can find an avenue for us to offer these internship opportunities for our members. And also on the issue of funding, I've, I've personally had a um, discussion with some of my executives where we are looking at um, charging and um, some deals, introducing the deals element where uh, members of um, young water professionals will pay. However, what we want to be careful about is once um, money is being taken, we have to have regular programs so that members can see that their monies are being used to good use. Because the moment you start taking money and you don't make good use of it, that can even become a reason where members will not even join or leave the association. I'll leave the rest of the questions for my colleagues on the call to respond. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you very much for your response. Maybe Charity has uh, something to add to the question of uh, Mohindo. Oh, hi, Mohindo. Uh, thank you for your questions. Um, I think I will tackle about the the member once you are thirty five years uh, and above. I have a policy in my chapter that uh, once you have been an active member for over three years an extremely active member for over that, for that three years, we don't dispose you, you automatically become a YWP mentor. So we don't uh, kick you out of the groups or our email system. You're always in loop because you're a valued um, member to us. You have so much to learn from you. And one of the things I advocate for so much is mentorship so that we can be able to make others grow and knowledge sharing. So. For us, no, we don't. Uh, we don't just dispose the thirty-five years, and I'm actually almost thirty-five years. So no, we we just get you a role as a, a mentor for yeah under the YWP. However, I think the Iowa should also be so clear about uh, what happens once you're thirty-five years and you've been an active member for a certain period of time. Yeah, I think. Uh... We kind of working on that. What to do with <laughs> further like this? Uh, let's say mid uh, mid year uh, professionals in between young professionals and you know senior ones. So yeah, thank you so much for your response to Muhinda and for the questions as well. Uh, I think we will be continue our discussion after second panel, but for now we will be moving to another panelist, and I'm happy to um, in introduce uh, our uh, representative from South Africa. It is uh, Eugen Fotso Simo. He's junior uh, water engineer at Zutari South Africa. Um, as well, he's like national coordination lead in young water professionals South Africa. He holds bachelor's degree in civil engineering and must, master's degree in water quality engineering from University of Cape Town. And uh, he's passionate about improving water infrastructure and technology in Africa. 
um, he believes joining young water professionals will bring him closer to his goal via the different networks he will form and the different activities he will take part in. Uh, so it's it sounds like very inspiring. And uh, I know very soon after one month, this uh, chapter will have a conference um, and um, we'll be happy to hear about conference journey to date and including lesson learned for any other chapters hoping to organize conference. Uh, again, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thanks, Lyudmila. You just let me know if you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Right, cool. Thanks for the introduction and hi to everyone. Um, I'll first go through an overview of my presentation. So I'll first go through um, the conference history in South Africa of the YWPs, then move to the general benefits of uh, having a conference to YWPs. Then touch on the overview of the conference we're currently organizing, touch on the theme and the sub-theme, then move to the progress we, we have made up till today. Um, then the lessons learned, I think that's where I'll maybe spend a minute or two. I'll spend most of my time there. And finally just introduce um, the organizing committee that has been working <laughs> quite hard. To, to get us where we are right now. Move to the next slide, please. Um, so the South African YWPs have been organizing conference for over a decade now. Um, the first was uh, in 2010, and most of them have been, uh, have had over 200 uh, delegates. We have had, there was one international conference that was in 2017 in Cape Town. Um, and all these conferences are typically ha happening every other year. Um, after 2019, there was COVID in 2020. So unfortunately in 2021, we couldn't have a, a physical conference. And uh, we decided in 2023 to get back to, to having the physical conference. And that has been the main drive um, to, to organize this one. Move to the next slide, please. Yeah, most of you have been to conferences, have organized a conference. So you, you mostly know what the benefits are in the networking aspect, um, the opportunities to present your, your research or to learn about the research of your peers, the opportunities to, to develop soft, soft skills and, and technical skills, and also having some form of uh, accreditation. Uh, we get some CPD points. Uh, those are points for professionals in South Africa whenever we attend such conferences. So all in all, it's always a good experience uh, for young professionals and students to attend uh, conferences. Move to the next slide, please. Okay, uh, now I'll touch a bit on the, on the details of the conference. The conference in Stellenbosch, I don't know, for, for those who know, uh, South Africa is in Stellenbosch, Putia Hotel. It will happen um, roughly a month from now, the 7th to the 10th of November. Initially, when we planned the conference, we were expecting about 100 to 150 delegates, but we might have more. Um, we had over 80 presentations and over 40 oral presentations. So, really? huh? okay, uh, sorry about that. Um, so we might we might be closer to the 200 number in my, in my opinion. The conference will basically be three days or let's say two and a half days. The first two days will be full of um, presentations and poster presentations and three workshops, one technical and probably two non-technical workshops. And the third day, which will be a half day, will basically be a technical tour in three different locations. One in a wastewater treatment works, um, one in a wine farm that treats its wastewater, and the third one in uh, in a water hub. And, and it will end with the, with the galadina as usual. Might have read it already, but the conference theme is breaking silos. The reason I chose that theme is because, as you will know, there are different water vulnerabilities in different parts of the world uh, due to maybe climatic extremes or poor governance or old infrastructure um, or inadequate infrastructure. And solutions to such problems require inputs from different disciplines, from engineers, from scientists, uh, from policymakers, and so on and so forth. We realized that for most of the past years, um, these disciplines have been working in an isolated fashion. And the, the aim of the conference is to target those young water professionals who have been trying to integrate different disciplines 
hence the, the, the theme uh, breaking silos. You can move to the, to the next slide, please. The conference was broken into five sub themes um, from innovation and technology to community particip participation, which touched on empowering communities. Um, a sub theme will be on climate change and water security. And another one on water governance, and the final one around sanitation, with, uh, water and health. Next slide, please. All right. At the moment, uh, the progress that we've made is we've, we've secured a venue already. We've made the payments. Um, we've we got like two sponsors already: uh, an anchor sponsor and a silver sponsor. So we're grateful for that. Our technical tools are finalized. We have the, the locations agreed on and everything sorted out in terms of um, logistics. We've got our keynote speakers, uh, the all oral and verbal presentations, all the abstracts have been reviewed and emails have been sent to those who were accepted and confirmations are being made right now. And we have over 50 uh, registrations already. So uh, we're happy about that. Can we move to the next, please? Okay, um, I think this is probably the most important slide. Uh, for those who would like to organize um, conferences, um, over the past few months, I've been I've been running these with the team. Um, these are the few points that I think were were the most important or the ones to, to really take into consideration when organizing a conference. The first is being proactive and getting a team running as soon as possible. Um, we we decided to really go for the conference early this year, around March or so, and it was very important for us to to get a team a team that will do the work, not just a team of people who want to, to just be part of the team, the people who actually um, lead in the different subcommittees and the different tasks required. So that was, that was critical. Mm -hmm. The second is getting help from those with experience. I'd never organized, a, or I'd never chaired a conference before, but a lot of people have chaired conferences before. So it's, it was critical for me to, to call them, email them, um, and get some guidance from them to know where the pitfalls are, to know what to look out for, and so on and so forth. The next is trusting the team. Uh, you can do everything alone, you cannot, it's, it's, it's impossible. And hence you have to really understand that each person that joined the team wanted to join the team because they wanted to, uh, to contribute or have an input. So it's important for you to trust the team and let those who are leading different aspects lead those aspects. Micromanagement doesn't really help in this case. Um, the next point is around planning. So the first month or so, my main task was having a, a plan from March till basically November to know exactly what we were going to do, what different subcommittees were going to do, their main milestones, and roughly when we wanted those milestones to be completed to ensure that the conference was successful. Obviously, that's, that's very rough at the start, but as you go, as time goes by, more inputs come through and make that plan a bit more solid. Next is about money. To, uh, to organize a conference or to organize a good conference, you need money. The money comes from sponsors, typically. And you need to have a list of sponsors, a, a very long list, because a lot of them will not respond. A lot of them will not respond. Out of, I don't know, 30 or 40, you might get one or two positive responses. So have an exhaustive list. Uh, list Ask people around you who might know potential sponsors and start contacting them as early as possible. The next point is around traceability. And I believe that holds for every, for every type of work you do, wherever you need continuity. If the previous conferences that were organized in some in essay were not traceable, so if I couldn't have access to the meeting minutes or to their different agenda points or things like that, I wouldn't be able, or our team wasn't going to be able to to perform as we're performing right now. So what we have to do right now, or what we are doing, is ensuring that everything is traceable on our side. So all our meetings are recorded, all the meeting minutes are kept somewhere, all the different templates and everything we're using is saved, such, such that the next um, team that will organize the conference has easy access to those, and it facilitates the way they, they plan their next conference. And finally, it's about managing and tracking your, your finances. That's, you have to do that from the start, to know if you can provide some, um, how do you say that, some discounts uh, for, for some delegates or not, or if you can have a nice galadina or not, um, or if you can have a better venue or not. So 
you have to definitely manage and track your finance as, as you go by. Right, uh, next slide. And this slide is just showing who the, the team are working on this conference is. Um, it's me, Eugene, the, the conference chair. And it's Craig Daniwa, uh, who's, who is completing his PhD right now. At University of Cape Town, who is the conference vice chair. Uh, and Suku, who's our technical subcommittee chair. MK was our marketing and communication sub committee chair and Mohamed Gilamisen, who's our exhibition and sponsorship uh, subcommittee chair. Next slide. If you want to get in contact or find us, you can hit us up on LinkedIn, uh, the Young Water Professional South Africa, on Twitter at YWPZA or via our, our website, ywpza.org. Thanks. Uh, and that's it from my side, Yudmila. Thank you again. Uh, being myself a part of the, you know, the organizing committee of conference, I can feel you, I can understand and confirm that it's quite a big deal to, uh, to manage everything, even like, yeah, think about all every inch part of that. So uh, let's say big congratulations to you guys for your work and yeah, sharing experience with those who is planning to have uh, this type of activities is also quite important. So thank you for sharing that with others. And we will be moving to uh, another East European, uh, sorry, East African country. Uh, it's Rwanda. I'm happy to introduce uh, uh, Benin Ishingwe Mugwaneza. She is uh, a chapter coordination of Young Water Professionals Rwanda. As well, she's a WASH governance expert in IRC WASH. And her work consists of driving IRC's capacity building agenda and lead the decentralized governance strengthening in Rwanda. She holds master's degree in water policy and governance and bachelor's, bachelor's degree in civil engineering with specialization in water resource management. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy to uh, give you the floor. I thank you very much. Um, we can go ahead with the presentation. I recognize that. Time is uh, <laughs> of the essence. Can you hear me very well, just to confirm? Yeah, sure. We, are, we, we can hear you. All right. So I'm going to be introducing you uh, uh, the Rwanda Young Water Professional, uh, which is also uh, currently a Naiwa chapter. Um, and as uh, they introduced me, my name is Benin Yishimi Mugwaneza. I'm from Rwanda, and I am the current um, chapter coordinator. So uh, about our chapter then, about our chapter, we are all composed of dedicated and enthusiastic and really passionate water environmental professionals. The reason why I'm emphasizing on that is um, that I would really keep you know, coming back on that. Uh, we, we make sure that we work with the people who are really into this because it's time consuming, it requires um, dedication, it requires uh, being uh, passionate and actually willing to, to work together with others. So this is the first really criteria to fit in our chapter. Uh, it was um, launched uh, in 2012 by passionate, uh, back then young water professionals, but currently seniors um, in 2012. This picture was actually when it was launched, but it was also uh, in partnership with uh, the East African uh, uh, Conference, the Young Water Professional Conference. Um, the Rwanda chapter was registered in Rwanda as a non-government organization in 2019, and it became an Iowa branded chapter in uh, 2023, in January this year. This is briefly about our background. Uh, we, we can go move on with the, with the slides, please. Our mission is to, to, to work with the Rwandan uh, water sector. We want, as young people, to also contribute in... Um, in addressing the issues that are in the sector, uh, bringing our knowledge, bringing our expertise, bringing our time, bringing our dedication to solve the issues. And of course, while doing that, we want to also empower all the young water professionals um, in various ways uh, through knowledge sharing and mentorship uh, and uh, offering a point of benchmark. Uh, we we operate under uh, specific areas of interest, but you you will see that they actually kind of bring together all the all the water related uh, 
matters that at least we see in our country. There is water resources management, environmental management, uh, water sanitation and hygiene, uh, climate change resilience and adaptation. And the key activities that we do, of course, are uh, not limited to these. We conduct networking and knowledge sharing events. We do uh, capacity building through different uh, ways and we do project development and implementation. So networking and, and knowledge sharing is done through webinars. Is, is that we, we, uh, each year we organize um, a, a knowledge sharing activity at the, at the national level and that knowledge uh, sharing activity is usually a conference. It was a, a web, um, I would say an online meeting back in uh, during the COVID period, but we usually make sure that it becomes a big conference where we invite um, seniors in the water sector, leaders, um, and also invite young water professionals from those who are still in school, those who are in uh, their early years of, uh, you know, career, internships, just starting jobs, and we bring our knowledge together. And it's always really, um, I would say, a lot of um, energy that comes out from these, uh, from these uh, uh, yearly events, because uh, that's when you see the uh, the members joining the, the young water professionals motivated and willing to actually participate in work. Um, and to do capacity building, this is done through a uh, partnership with other organizations that I will maybe mention later. There are organizations in the water sector who are willing and who have on their agenda to actually work with uh, young water professionals. So we make sure that we leverage that and we work them to, we, with them to actually um, organize various uh, capacity building activities. Um, project development and implementation. We have, uh, we have, um, the knowledge to do the projects because most of us have gone through the studies and and this is also done because it, it also emphasizes on the learning part so we we actually take on board uh projects that we implement of course with partnership with other organizations and deliver uh next slide please uh so how we work uh this is a this is a structure that uh, uh, we are currently operating under. We have the government, the governance board, which is com uh, uh, composed of um, uh, key founding members of the chapter. These are more, I would uh, say that these are more like mentors of the chapter. These people have founded the chapter, but now they are like in very high level um, positions in the country and the water sector, other con others consulting, even abroad, uh, working abroad, but in the sector. So these are like our mentors that we go to uh, for advices for um uh, for strategic planning and under the governance board we have uh, the operations and the business uh, development hub com composed of operations manager business development lead and finance experts of course since we do implementation of projects we have we earn um, income uh, and then we make sure that there is compensation of the members who, who have um, contributed. We have to pay taxes. We have to make sure that we comply with all the finance requirements. Uh, we have operations, uh, operations that make sure that all the activities are well coordinated. And we have business development. I talked about um, I talked about um, project implementation. That's but we have to actually look for business. We have to look for projects to implement, and um, we make sure that this is coordinated under the business development lead. And of course, that um, uh, this hub is uh, over overseen by the Iowa uh, Rwanda chapter coordinator, uh, which is me. And um, and also there is, a, I would say, the cross-cutting hubs, which is the communications hub that has to work with other hubs. And we have the capacity development and career guidance hub that's cross-cutting as well, because this is the ultimate goal of the can be large. So we have smart water management hub, we have the climate uh, resilience wash hub, and we have the sustainable landscapes hub. These hubs bring together the previous um the topics that I previously uh, mentioned. And these hubs actually help us to, you know, uh, look for opportunities that are specific and actually they can dedicate their time and concentrate their efforts to a specific uh, topic rather than, you know, being uh, um, all over the place. Um, so these hubs um, identify projects, potential projects, potential opportunities to work together and collaborate with other organizations. They bring them on the table and they work with the uh, operations and the uh, chapter coordination hub to actually um, uh, uh, take, take the decision to move forward. Uh, each hub has an action plan on a yearly basis that uh, they develop and uh, work um, 
with accordingly. So our key achievements so far, um, the capacity development of young water professionals, uh, fresh graduates, uh, this is done under um, our capacity development uh, uh, hub, but also we, we work with partners, as I emphasized, in, uh, we have partners in the country who are willing to work with young water professionals, like uh, the, 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 uh, the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, we have IRC, we have UNESCO Rwanda, we have um, Ministry of Environment, and many more others. Uh, we currently have uh, also a partnership with, uh, um, in, in place with, um, with WaterAid, so there is always opportunities to collaborate. And when we have knowledge sharing events, uh, our organizations like the University of Rwanda and under the College of Science and Technologies who are already um, you know, dedicated to, to share knowledge, uh, the Global Water Partnership and the Rwanda Water Partnerships, uh, those are the organizations that we have worked so far with to actually uh, organize the yearly knowledge sharing events that I've talked about. These are the pictures of some of those. The first one is a training that was deliv being delivered to fresh young graduates about wash system strengthening. Uh, the second one is a, 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 the yearly um, knowledge sharing event that we organized in partnership with the, with the Global Water Partnership in Rwanda. And the last one was a knowledge sharing event with uh, University of Rwanda. Um, move, moving forward, please. Other key achievements, uh, we also do advocacy and campaign uh, campaigns initiatives. This is something that I, I, I realize that we share with other chapters that have presented. We, we make sure that we go with the agenda of the country in the water and environmental sector, and we contribute. Uh, this is an activity that we're doing uh, of tree planting in partnership with the Ministry of Environment. And then we work with um, uh, with also um, um, other partners to make sure that we we participate in other countries. In Rwanda, we have a monthly uh, day where uh, a community uh, cleaning day, and this is an opportunity that we usually use to actually contribute towards uh, other water-related uh, activities that are needed. And we do tours in schools. You know, sometimes grad, uh, uh, students in high school do not really know what it is about water. And some of us actually, you know, joined even the fields without really understanding, but we want them to actually understand what it is about and how they can join and what, how they can contribute. So we do tour in high schools to, 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 to explain uh, how they can actually contribute. So always a part of the knowledge sharing uh, agenda of us. In project uh, implementation, we have uh, implemented quite a number of uh, projects. We're still implementing. Um, um, as you can see, um, this one, uh, the, 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 there are many projects that we have implemented, like, for example, this one on natural based, um, natural uh, based solution for, for flood mitigation in informal settlement. This is a project that we have uh, implemented in partnership with UNESCO. They, bas they basically, I would say, um, hired us to, to do the study and we delivered uh, the final study. Um, uh, moving forward, please. And you can see that all the projects actually fall under the different hubs that I've highlighted. Uh, we have also implemented uh, projects uh, in partnership with um, the, uh, the World Resources Institute, um, the Urban Water Resilience Initiative. These are studies, we go on the field, we do data collection, we produce documents and, and findings, and we deliver. Um, and, and, and currently we are working with the World Inst uh, Resources Institute again on the identification and scoping of priority urban water resilience projects for the city of Kigali and Musanze. Moving forward, please. Yes, so we are currently still implementing other projects, um, and uh, but also um, ultimately we want, I would say that we have, we have been really focused for the past couple of years on uh, building ourselves as a, as a chapter, as a Rwandan chapter. Um, uh, I personally joined the chapter in uh, in 2019 uh, as a, an active member, and um, we are we currently have um, 100 and 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 uh, we have had 170, I would say 79 chapter uh, members. We have, of course, those who have graduated from to the senior part, and when they are interested, they can actually join the the the, the board members, um, um, and then they, we we keep in touch to towards the implement. The, this is actually where we get partnership from. You know, the seniors we get in touch, we connect, and then this is how we get uh, partnerships and project implementation. We have also worked with um, uh, chapters in the region to to see uh, how we can collaborate. 
Um, obviously, since we have been a, a Nairo branded uh, chapter, we have seen that um, it's a good global network um, uh, to be part of. Um, this is, a, for example, being part of these calls where we can learn from other chapters. Um, we, you, you all know very well that uh, we are going to be host. Rwanda is going to host uh, the Iowa Congress, and uh, this is a great opportunity for us. And uh, being an Iowa branded uh, chapter now, we are proactively working with uh, the the Iowa uh, young water professionals to to definitely contribute uh, proactively. And of course, um, I think about partnerships. And yes, please. Bonin, I'm sorry. Uh... Yeah, you have very really serious structure. It's, I believe your chapter is very uh, uh it looks like very advanced and doing really great job, but maybe we need to finish a bit. We have some one more speaker. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think this is the last slide. I've really pretty much uh, covered everything. Uh, that, uh any questions is welcome. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Yes, thank you very much for your uh, presentation. And we will be shortly moving to another speaker because we are uh, uh, we are lacking of the time. And uh, our next speaker will be Serge Bashonga from Democratic Republic of Congo. He is an environmentalist, green entrepreneur, and water climate activist for uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. And uh, since 2016, he has been involved in several youth activities and projects of, on issues related to the presentation of water resources, sanitation, and fight against climate change. Uh, today, he will be sharing experience of DRC Congo uh, Young Water Professionals Chapter as a platform for exchange of experiences between professionals of water, sanitation, and environment in his country. Uh, Serge, can you please speak up? Lujimila, I think that Serge is having some issues with internet um, connection. All right. I... Anyway, let's maybe. Yeah, he, he opened his mic now. Let's see. Serge, can you hear us? Uh, all right. I, I, I can see. You hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you please uh, present? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, as Lujimila said, my name is Serge Bashonga. And uh, I'm the current chair of the Iowa Young Water Professional DRC. Next slide, please. So uh, the Iowa Young Water Professional chapter is a network of young Congolese under the age of 35 and who wish, uh, who wish to develop their network, develop their careers, and, and contribute to the development of the work sector in DRC. And our goal is to provide work and network in order, of course, to advance their careers in the water sector and uh, get connected internationally. So uh, some of our specific objectives are to create a platform for the exchange of experiences between the water, sanitation, uh, but also to create, uh, to provide career development and personal growth uh, to young water professionals, raise awareness on issues related to the production of water resources, sanitation, and the fight against climate change, sharing the Iowa uh, efforts in reducing the impact of climate change and the environmental degradation, and lastly, conduct a public and private sanitation action for the improvement of... Serge, we are having some issues it with your like... audio. Serge, uh... Since we are having some issues with your internet connection, so, uh, could you please just turn off your camera? Sorry, Lajimila, could you please repeat? I was saying, uh, as long as Serge having some issues with internet, it seems like his presentation will not be you know, like you know heard good enough. So I feel like we will just include this material in the in the um, you know, previous slides, what we'll be sharing. So everyone can, can hear about that. And we also have like very short time already. That's so, okay. We can move it. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, but it seems like we will not be able to hear from him. <laughs> I would like to, but uh, yeah, unfortunately. Um, yes. Um, maybe just quick question to our uh, last panelists and overall uh, like the audience who is already like young water professionals like what gave you the most being a young water professional and a part of a chapter just for we have maybe two three minutes to discuss this question anyone is willing to 
maybe uh, uh, Jürgen, would you like to step up? Step uh, up. Yes, can you just repeat the question, please? I was giving some kind of open question, like what gave you the most to be a young water professionals and maybe in particular RWEA one or being a part of a chapter? What do you think like uh, on your personal uh, view? Uh, what gave me the most being a water VP? Uh, okay, what I'm understanding is what the what I've gained um, from being part of uh, water VP chapter. Um, and I think it's first, I think that the main thing is the network I've gained. Um, I've, I've gained tremendous network in the in the water sector, uh, nationally and internationally. Um, and the second is probably um, organizational skills, um, especially when I'm organizing, when I'm part of the organizing committee of this conference. Um, so those, those are the two aspects I'll, I'll say. All right. Thank you very much. Anyone would like? I'm happy to 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 uh, answer that as well. Um, sure. Yes, this is Benin from Rwanda. Um, and what I gained from being part of the Young Water Professional Network is uh, is career growth. Career growth because it it was an opportunity to get mentors, to learn how to do the work, to learn the issues and how I can contribute. Uh, so basically, um, uh, the 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 level that I am with my career today is thanks to being part of the network. Okay, that's that's I think as well what I can uh, agree uh, to because uh, having like skills, whatever we um, gain here, right? Beside like our technical knowledge and. Uh, I don't know other professional experience. It also give us some uh some opportunity, further opportunities for the career. So, um, anyone else from the audience would like to respond? Maybe one volunteer, and then we will be concluding. Yeah, it looks like not much volunteers <laughs> today. Hello, everyone. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yes, I was presenting myself. So my name is Fadila Garba. Yes. And I'm from Niger. Okay. Um. Well, I'm present. I'm representing a, ded a dedicated group of individuals committed to addressing the critical water challenges facing in Niger. So, as you know, the country is facing multiple water-related issues. What make this situation even more promise promising in the and unwearing enthusiasm and motivation among the youth in Niger to take action. And I would like to express my deep interest in being part of Iowa. We already have in Niger a group of young people who are very interested in the wash sector. So I was wondering like, how can we join? Uh, so that one, I think uh, you can write to Isabella and she can Sure. <laughs> yeah. Hi, yeah. Isabella. Hi, Falda. Uh, please send me an email about this and we can discuss. I can support you in, during the process and I can send you all the information that you need to establish a chapter in your, chap in your country. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Fadila, for interest in your comments. So I think we will be um, concluding and let me just uh, uh, share some few announcements for the future events. Very soon, like after a few months in December, we will have Water and Development Congress and exhibition in uh, Rwanda. Uh, and uh, yeah, as well, there will be like Emerging Water Leaders um, Forum, um, which will have the topic empowering our water professionals to champion the course for a water and climate resilient future. So I believe it will be great if uh, uh, the, the young professionals from the region will join and contribute to this uh, forum. Um, then also we have a discount code to become a member. Uh, so please use this opportunity. And uh, yes, thank you very much for the panelists and also to the participants because you know all of the contribution counts and i believe uh, sharing our experience always can uh, inspire someone or uh, give some other like thoughts or like um, give some opportunities uh, to 
other young professionals who, for example, never knew about this before, or like were always somehow seeking for some new information and uh, um, opportunities. So yes, thank you very much. And I was happy to uh, uh, have all of you here today and to commemorate this event. See you during the next, our original calls. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.